Hi there, and uh, welcome to uh, the newest mini lecture. My name is uh, Örjan Nilsson, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about Taekwondo history. Uh, to be more exact, I'm going to delve in more into uh, Mudo Kwan. And the reason for that is because of a short discussion that uh, I was involved in on Facebook. The gist of it was that someone shared a very interesting article uh, from a blog, not mine, uh, about Wang Qi's uh, 1958 Mu Du Quan book. Uh, the, the title of the book is uh, Tang Su Du Kyo Bun, or uh, Tang Su Du uh, Textbook in English. It was published originally in 1958 in Seoul, but the post that was shared on Facebook uh, was more uh, a translation of uh, forms that was practiced, uh, which one key listed. Now, one of the first comments that was published on the Facebook page or the thread in Facebook suggested that uh, Mudu Kwan and Wang Qi was not relevant for Taekwondo history, so we shouldn't study any of his writings. Uh, Wang Qi and Mudu Kwan was totally irrelevant for Taekwondo, he said. And uh, to a certain degree he is correct, and to a certain degree I find that viewpoint very limiting and uh, also false. The reason for this is that modern Taekwondo was formulated uh, as a gathering of several different schools or Kwan. And uh, we who practice Kuki Taekwondo or WTF Taekwondo or WT uh, Taekwondo today, we are a style which is a hybrid or um, uh, what should I say, all, all the schools join together to form the style that we practice today. And in ITF Taekwondo, uh, or Changhun Ryu is primarily of Odo Kwan uh, and Choi Hong Hee. But uh, if you limit Taekwondo to be just his style, then you are correct, Wang Ki is very little relevant for them. But to everyone else who has uh, a Kwan lineage or uh, who uh, study Kuki Taekwondo, he is important and I I'll tell you why. Uh, Mudo Kwan was opened in 1944 and Wang Ki he did not study in uh, Japan, which was the norm for uh, the Kwan founders. He started his study in uh, Manchuria, China. Uh, where he studied, he was working on the railroad and uh, he learned of a man who could teach him uh, Tai Chi and uh, something called Tam Tui, uh, which are linear forms that were uh, pretty new at the time in the 1930s. In uh, 1945, he traveled back to Korea, where he founded his Mu Du Kwan, uh, School of Martial Virtue. And uh, he didn't call what he taught at that school uh, Dang Su Du or uh, Kun Bop or uh, Kung Su Du, which were the normal terms. He made his own terms, which term which he called Wa Su Du. And Wa Sudu, uh, Wa is the same as uh, Warang, and uh, it means flowery hand. Wa is flower, and uh, Su is uh, a term for hand. So the way of the flowing hand was what he originally taught. Uh, but that uh, his art didn't really have any commercial success. So uh, he went to Chungdu Kwan which was already opened by uh, Lee Wong Kook or E Wong Kook uh, and there he he practiced for a, a while and uh, according to 
Lee Won Kuk, which is uh, perhaps how it is pronounced in English. Uh, according to him, he only got an intermediate rank, a color belt rank. But he did change his style when he went back to uh, focus on his own school. Uh, he adopted the term Tang Sudu, uh, which you then see in 1958 in his Tang Sudu textbook title, and uh, he uh, also implemented several karate forms, or Hyong, uh, in his uh, school. Now, he and uh, a man called Yun Kwe Byung. Uh, who was responsible for reopening the Ji Du Kwan after the Korean War, or Yun Mu Kwan as Ji Du Kwan after the Korean War? They had a Subaktu uh, uh, association. They had their own organization where uh, they worked together, exchanged forms, which might uh, explain how. Wang Qi could list so many forms in his textbook. The list that he provides in his book is far greater than the forms he actually documents in that book. Wang Qi worked in the railroad in Manchuria, China, and he also worked in the railroad when he got back to Korea. So he had access to transportation infrastructure and uh, uh, warehouses where he could establish schools throughout Korea. So according to Wang Qi himself, he said that about, I don't remember the exact uh, percentage, but the far majority of uh, martial artists in Korea during the early 60s, they were part of his organization. And in the, the late 60s, we see a great influx of students from uh, Wang Qi and Yung Kwe Byung's uh, Subaktu organization enter the Korean Taekwondo Association and they cite that one of the reasons why they uh, quit the Palkwe uh, forms, the Pumse that they had already or recently made was because the Mudu Kwan and Chidu Kwan hadn't really had a, a, a say in it they hadn't had any uh, influence on how the basics were done or the pumse, the palgue. So they replaced the palgue with the teguk and they allowed the mudu kwan and the chidu kwan to influence what was to become kuki taekwondo. To get a clear picture on what the students of uh, Wang Ki brought to the table for the Korean Taekwondo Association, we can look to this book, the Tang Sudu textbook from 1958. Now, the reason why I said it's true that Wang Ki is not really relevant for a modern Taekwondo is that uh, his later inventions, his uh, whole Subaktu style with the Yukro Hyong six paths. Uh, forms and the uh, Chilsung uh, Hyung or the seven star uh, forms and uh, his technical evolution toward a softer more perhaps Chinese inspired uh, or natural in movement inspired uh, techniques uh, they came later and uh, you can say that anything that Wang Qi contributed, uh, invented, uh, perfected uh, the evolution of Tang Sudu in his style, the Mudu Kwan, directly under him after the late 60s is irrelevant for modern Taekwondo. But his early works is very relevant for us uh, because his students uh, they influenced the modern style of Kuki Taekwondo. So many dismiss Mudu Kwan and Wang Qi entirely. And uh, I think that is very wrong. And another example you can uh, pull in is that many of the later grandmasters of Kuki Taekwondo 
Uh, they came from Wudukwam. Uh, one of the finest examples might be uh, Richard Chan uh, from New York in the United States. He was one of the earliest pioneers in the USA. He was not the first, but uh, he was one of the earliest. Uh, he wrote one of the perhaps best books on Kuki Taekwondo, one of the earliest, m most comprehensive Taekwondo books in English. And before the Kuki One textbook was widely uh, available, as it is today, you can go to Amazon and order it right away. Uh, his textbook was very important and it influenced a lot of other masters and uh, he also uh, kept teaching the Mudu Kwan Hyong, the, the original karate imported forms and uh, you have his students keeping on uh, influencing the cookie style you have a uh, well Doug Cook he, he sorry if I mispronounced your name uh, he is also an excellent writer uh, he has written many books uh, Taekwondo traditions history philosophy uh, is a, a good example of, of uh, the older hard style traditional Taekwondo it's very block kick punch but uh, it consists of many of the things that are perhaps lost in mainstream Taekwondo like one steps and three steps, uh, one step sparring and three step sparring, the, the formal uh, sparring kinds. And uh, he also discusses uh, meditation uh, history in a not political way so you do get uh, a good uh, history uh, section in that book. But what I'm trying to say is that even though uh, Doug, I hope I pronounce your name correctly, he, he influences a lot of people through his writings, but he is a direct student of Richard Chan, who is from Mudukwan. So how can you dismiss Mudukwan on the basis that Wang Ki himself didn't directly contribute to Taekwondo, yes, uh, he did uh, his own thing, but he is very relevant through his early works for us even today. And uh, that's it for today. <laughs>